Hey everyone, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics with another comic book roundup video. This is where I show off all the cool comic books I got over the last month or so that I have not yet shown on the channel. Now some of these do have footage attached to them, others do not. The one thing they have in common, I think they're all pretty awesome and I can't wait to share them with all of you. Uh, this one's a little bit different as well because I just got this in the mail. They're comic books that I bought and for the life of me, I don't remember what's in here. I completely forgot. Uh, so you guys will be seeing it at the same time I do, or at least the same time I remember what the heck I bought. So this is gonna be some pretty cool stuff, guys. I can't wait to share it with you. And with that being said, let's jump right into it. Starting with some comic books I bought at my local comic book store, His and Her Comics in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Now, I don't know what it is lately, but he's been getting collections in every single week, multiple collections. And because of that, me and a lot of other locals have been going up there to see what he's getting. And every time I've gone, he's either had someone call him saying they had another collection to sell him or someone literally brought the books in. It's been nuts, like two or three collections per week for the last month. And that's exactly where this book came from. So I was up there looking at a collection that had come in like a day or two before. And there was an older couple there selling their entire collection. The owner, Nishan, went through the whole thing bought it all and then I basically got first dibs on this collection as it was laying right there in front of me. So I actually have some footage to show you guys of me looking at these books for the very first time. Did you look up the 57? Uh, which one? Tales of Astonish. Oh, wow. So as you can see, there were some pretty awesome books in that collection, and a lot of them I was very interested in. However, the owner, Nishan, really wanted to take the time to, you know, do due diligence, check the condition, and price them out accordingly. Except for one book. There's a book I was very interested in, and it's actually a book I already own. It's actually an X-Men book, and I'm at the point in my X-Men collecting right now where I have almost everything I want. I'm just sort of upgrading some of the more poor condition ones. Uh, and when I mentioned that to Nishan, because I was there early, you know, it was a book he was about to price at $75, and he offered it to me much cheaper. You saw in the footage one of my favorite X-Men covers of all time, and it's this. This is X-Men number 100 from 1976, of course, written by Chris Claremont, Art by Dave Cockrum. This is before John Byrne has jumped on the title in issue 108. Uh, and there's a lot of cool things going on with it. We have this awesome cover showing the old guard original X-Men going against the new X-Men that had just been introduced in giant size X-Men number one the previous year. Uh, awesome cover showing all the X-Men of, you know, the Bronze Age. Of course, spoiler alert, they're not really fighting. Turns out the original X-Men are actually robots. They're Sentinels. And uh, there's a big fight and it's kind of cool. However, there's another claim to fame here. At the end of this book, the X-Men's jet crashes into New York Harbor and Jean Grey is presumed dead, only to be revealed as Phoenix in X-Men 101 you see behind me. So in a lot of ways, this book here kind of kicks off the whole Phoenix and Dark Phoenix saga. That entire famous arc, one of the most famous storylines in all of comic books, kind of starts in this book here. Uh, so yeah, this is a much higher grade copy of the one I already own because the one I have already, I got at a yard sale uh, down the street from where I live a couple of years ago. It is not in great shape. I was happy to have found it at a great price, but I knew I'd always want an upgrade. Uh, there's only one little color break down here on the corner. A beautiful copy. Uh, the owner was gonna price this at $75. He sold it to me for 60 bucks. But this wasn't the only book that I got in that $60 price tag. Um, I also grouped it with a couple of other books he basically threw in for free. So while he was sort of negotiating the price on this collection, I was going through the boxes of the last collection he got in just a few days ago, and those were in long boxes, 
but even those he hadn't quite priced yet. And there were lots of cool stuff from like the 80s and the 70s that I'm really into. But oddly enough, the book that jumped out to me the most was a modern book. And when I say modern, guys, I'm talking from 2023. This is not a book that you would normally see Lunch Money Comics buy, but I have to explain why it jumped out to me. And it's this. So this is Power Girl issue number one from 2023. This is the Natalie Sanders exclusive magazine design variant. Um, you can see it looks like a magazine, kind of like a Vanity Fair or something like that. Uh, yeah, and it shows Power Girl and she's pretty cool. And obviously the art is really neat. Now, I'm not the biggest Power Girl fan. Why did I really like this book when it jumped out? Well, quite frankly, first of all, it's a striking book. I did think it looked pretty cool. But when I flipped it around, it had this. It has a, uh, a certificate of authenticity showing that it is one of 800 printings, right? So they only made 800 of these books. Um, and I didn't really think much about it. I said, oh, that's cool. Maybe it's signed or something on the inside. And when I grabbed this book along with the X-Men book, Nishan said, just take it. Well, when I got home and looked it up, I was actually surprised to find this can actually go for a little bit of money. Uh, certainly a lot more than free, which is what I got it for. There's also a virgin variant that goes for a lot of money. So um, yeah, guys, I don't really care much about like modern comics, and I certainly don't buy into the whole manufactured rarity that they do these days by limiting the numbers and you know exclusive things. Uh, but it just struck me. It was a cool book. Again, I got it for nothing. I thought it was a neat thing to kind of add to my very small modern collection and was pleasantly surprised to find out it was worth a little bit. So Nishan, thanks so much for throwing this in. This is a cool book. Um, yeah, happy to add it to the collection. And the other book that I got in there for free, uh, Nishan always knows I'm looking for these. I talk about this book on my channel all the time. It's a Heroes for Hope starring the X-Men, 1985 to raise money for the famine in East Africa. I'm getting one of these signed by as many people that have worked on the book as possible. And whenever I get extra copies, I save them for my friends as sort of giveaways and you know stocking stuffers. So happy to get all these. Once again, I got all three of these for $60, guys. Uh, I think that's a pretty awesome deal. Uh, but when I was at the comic show, I wasn't alone. Uh, my friend Ben Taz, who's a comic book artist, He's been on my channel several times in the past. He was standing right next to me. Now, he had been up there a few days prior looking through one of the new collections, and he found uh, a Dave Stevens comic. Now, he's been collecting Dave Stevens. He's really gone down that rabbit hole, and he actually knows which ones I own because he's seen my collection. So Ben actually found a Dave Stevens comic in there that he knew I didn't have and that I've really been looking for, and he was gracious enough to buy it and put it aside for me, although he didn't have it on his person while we were there. However, when I was going through those boxes of comics, I actually missed a Dave Stevens comic. I just didn't recognize it for reasons I'll explain in a minute. I blasted right by it, didn't notice, and left. Luckily, Ben stayed behind, went through the box. He's like, hey, Mike missed a Dave Stevens comic? Yeah, it's because Ben has like a perfect, um, you know, encyclopedic memory of the entire Dave Stevens library at this point. Um, but I totally missed it. He pulled that one aside as well. He let me know I missed it. I said, oh, oh well, that happens, right? Well, the next day I came home, opened my mailbox, and I had some presents. <laughs> ben left me the book he had found the few days prior and the one I missed right there for me. Ben, you are the best man. He got a really, really good deal from Nishan, like a dollar each. So let's start with this one. This is one of my favorite Dave Stevens covers, one I've been looking for for a while. This is Johnny Quest number five from 1986. Uh, Johnny Quest, obviously, guys, a very cool character. Uh, goes back far longer uh, back than the 80s. Uh, I know my mom was a big fan of him. And you see here, this is classy. You got, you know, Johnny Quest there. And then you have his sort of uh, femme fatale. Dave Stevens was so good at drawing women. And here we have Jezebel Jade, sort of like a secret agent kind of person. So I've always loved this cover. It's super cool. Um, Dave did a couple other Johnny Quest covers in this run, uh, but this is the one I like the most. Super happy to get it. Thank you so much, Ben, for grabbing it. And the one I missed is quite interesting. So the reason I missed this is because this is Grendel number four from 1987, and this didn't look like Dave Stevens to me. Well, I was partially right. That's because this was actually done uh, by the Pander Brothers, and Dave Stevens, you see his signature right there with them, actually inked this. He uh, inked the cover. I think he did some of the work on the inside. And this really doesn't really look like Dave Stevens to me, but the inking certainly is. On the back cover, there's a really cool cityscape, screams Dave Stevens. Um, but I knew nothing about this book. I still don't really know not, uh, much about this book, except for 
Grendel has been around for a really long time. It's sort of like a noir comic. Started at Comico, went to Dark Horse. I might still be actually in publication. So I don't know much about it other than it's a noir comic book and it has some pretty awesome art over, you know, the 40 years it's been around. But yeah, Ben found it. I'm happy he has the entire, you know, uh, library of Dave Stevens memorized because I certainly don't. So Ben, thank you so much once again uh, for throwing uh, these two in my mailbox. You totally made my day and I did not expect it. Which brings me to this unboxing. So I actually bought these comic books on Whatnot. Uh, I mentioned in a recent video, I've been a long time lurker of Whatnot, but never actually bought anything. Uh, but my friends started selling on Whatnot and uh, they're actually the only people I've ever bought from. Um, all these books, if I recall, were like one to three dollars. Uh, again, they were on like during the middle of the day, you know, I was working, I have a real job, jumped on whenever I could, saw some books I liked and just started hitting that button. And before I knew it, guys, I had a bundle and I just don't remember what's in here. So I got these from Magic Geeks. I'll put some links down in my description to their whatnot channel. Uh, they sell everything super cheap. They're really nice guys, good friends of mine. And I'll have some more stories to go along with uh, this sale uh, at the end of the video. But let me open this up and remind myself of what the heck that I bought. Yep, they packaged this up pretty good. All right, what is this first one? Oh yeah, no, okay, I remember. Um, although I don't think I bought this one. I think this one is a throw-in. All right, I'm remembering now. All right, ready for this, guys? <laughs> this is a French-Canadian Incredible Hulk. Uh, L'Incroyable Hulk uh, special French uh, issue right here. Uh, yes, now I'm remembering what a lot of these are. So I actually do like to collect foreign language comic books. Um, and being that I have some French Canadian heritage myself, I do like these French Canadian ones. They had lots of French ones and German ones. Nobody else was buying them. They were like a dollar a piece. And that's why I started hitting the button. Um, it looks like this was an extra one because I'm pretty sure I didn't buy this. Uh, but it's really cool. These are um, printed, I believe. Yep. In St. Lambert, Quebec, right? They're all black and white art. They're all from the uh, the 70s, I believe. Yep, and you see here, you know, The Incredible Hulk, La Fin du Monde, The End of the World on Australia, in Australia, right? And uh, yeah, I just love seeing the black and white art, guys. They're really cool. You know, they're reprints of regular English, you know, comic books. Uh, and I just love them. And uh, oh, this looks like it's another story. This is The Human Torch. Uh... <laughs> Combat of so uh, 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 combat to the death with asbestos man in the Human Torch. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, really neat guys, right? Um, so yeah, I think there's gonna be a whole bunch of these in there. Uh, let me know down in the comments if any of you collect uh, foreign language comics. Doesn't count if you're actually in a non-English speaking country. You know what I mean. If you're uh, in the United States or the UK, do you like collecting all these other foreign ones? Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I uh, do know French a little bit. I know just enough German to get myself in trouble. So what do we got? Okay. <laughs> awesome. So we have another French Canadian one. This is Captain America and the Falcon, right? Number 31. Oh, is that the Black Panther on there too? How cool is that? I got to change the bag, obviously very dirty bag, but awesome. Oh yeah. I remember this one. This one's awesome. So this is Phantoms, right? Looks like a horror comic in French and there's some sort of crazy arcane beast right there right awesome woman being thrown into it kind of dark huh cool this is the other horror one specters and revenants right that is cool that is cool yeah i can't wait to actually open these up and dig through them guys i don't exactly know what these are but when it's something you're not familiar with it's worth buying and this one here uh, looks like a throw-in. I'm pretty sure I didn't buy this one. Uh, it's Winnie. Oh, there's one on the back. Hold on. So this is uh, Winnie Pooh. You see that with a P-U-H. Looks like it's German. Der Kleine Teddy Bar. And on the back, we have Chéri. Um, yep, and like a, another French-Canadian. Not sure. Not sure what this is. This is why it's fun, guys. This is why I like to get these books. Uh, they're surprising. They're surprising because <laughs> I don't remember what was in there, but they're surprising because there's something different, right? Um, this one, I absolutely knew uh, that I got it. Um, this one here is, um, I just didn't have it in my collection. So this is Astonishing X-Men number one, awesome Wolverine claw cover. Uh, yeah, I just didn't own this book. Uh, it was, again, it was like a dollar or so. Just grabbed it. While you get the shipping, guys, and they cap the shipping at like $8, I just kept piling it up. Um, okay. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Um, I don't know why I grabbed this at all. So we have Jim Rugg Hulk, uh, grand design. So obviously this is an homage to Hulk, 
uh, 340. And uh, yeah, I just, I'd never seen this before, guys. I'm not even exactly sure what this is. I think this is issue one. This is a variant uh, copy of it. Um, it's not that old, a couple of years ago. Maybe it's from last year. But yeah, I never saw it before, guys. I just hit the button. You know how it is. So uh, let me know if any of you uh, have, know anything about the series. I'd love to hear from you. And I remember what this is. And I feel like a jerk on this last one, guys. Um, so these are my friends, right? And, you know, they have a pretty good, you know, little audience and people that follow them. They're watching and they do giveaways. And I always say um, I'm not going to do a giveaway because they're my friends. It's weird. You know, and a lot of people that were in, you know, at the time that were in there, you know, shopping, knew I was there. And they did this giveaway and I just wasn't thinking, uh, you know, I was working. I just hit the little button for giveaway, not paying attention. And of course, my name came up and I won one of the free giveaways. And I immediately said, guys, I'm so sorry. Don't give it to me. You know, give it to someone else. They said, that's not how it works. It has to go to you now. It's added to the inventory or the invoice. So I feel bad. I'll have to find something to do with this, like give it away. But what book did I win? It's this, King Spawn number one from Image. Uh, again, this is a very recent book. I don't know much about this at all. It might even be a variant cover. I don't know, but we got, you know, Todd McFarlane cover. It's really cool. It's really awesome. I don't know much about it. I'm not a big Spawn collector. Let me know down in the comments if you know what this is, but I feel awful for stealing it from some people who probably love Spawn <laughs> on that whatnot stream. So I apologize, but I did win something. Hey, pretty cool. I guess I never won anything. Uh, so that's it, guys. That's what I got from the actual whatnot sale. A whole bunch of cool, cool foreign comic books I can't wait to dig into. Let me know down in the comments what you think of all these. Uh, I think they're all pretty darn cool, especially like these horror ones. I think I'm I think they're awesome absolutely but that's not the end of the story with this whatnot stream because although my friends were mostly selling cheaper comics they were selling some bigger ones including some like slabbed books uh and you know they put them up for sale and a few of them did not sell so i just sort of texted them like hey i might be interested in a few of those if you want to sell them to me or maybe trade for them now i did a video with these guys a few weeks back where I joke that I stole a comic book from them. It was Amazing Spider-Man number 121, The Death of Gwen Stacy, which is up on my wall right now. And I joked in that video that I stole it, but what actually happened was I noticed it on their stream, said I was interested, went over to their house at lunch and just took it and said we'd square up later. Well, we still needed to square up. Plus now we have uh, at least one book I saw on their stream again I was interested in. So I went up to their house later on uh, and we did some deals and we basically squared everything away. So first and foremost, for those of you that were wondering, I ended up buying that 121 for $100 and I paid the same price for this next book, which was definitely cheaper than what they were selling for. Now this book, um, it is a slab book and it is an X-Men book that I already own. Um, I did get it because I wanted a better copy, but also because, well, I love this comic book. One of my favorite X-Men comic books of all time. And it is this. This is X-Men number 141 from 1981, written by Chris Claremont, art by John Byrne and Terry Austin. And this is part one of the very famous two-part storyline, The Days of Future Past. So in this storyline, it actually takes place in two different timelines. You know, the current time, which I guess would have been 1981, and also a dystopian future. Now, in this future, um, Sentinels have taken over the world. And, you know, the United States of America is basically a police state where not only have the X-Men been hunted down, all mutants, but a lot of superheroes, actually. And that's why you see, uh, you know, this poster right here of all these apprehended or slain X-Men characters. Well, there is a final resistance in this dystopian future pushing back. Um, and it's uh, lots of members like, you know, Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, again, alternate versions, as well as Kitty Pride. Now, the reason this dystopian future exists is because back in the present day, a, uh, a United States senator who had lots of opposition to uh, mutants was assassinated by Mystique and her Brotherhood of Mutants. So to stop this event from happening and having this horrible future happen, the X-Men send back Kitty Pride, who's an adult in the future, back into her younger self. Now, the younger Kitty Pride had just joined the X-Men in the previous issues. Remember, this happens just after the Dark Phoenix Saga. The older um, dystopian future, Kate Pride goes back, tells the X-Men what's about to happen, that they need to stop Mystique. And so this two-part storyline in 141 and 142 tells the story of these two different timelines of what's going on in the future as the X-Men sort of hold on as far as they can to try to buy her as much time as possible 
while one by one they kind of get killed. And then in present day, when the X-Men are trying to stop the assassination attempt, certainly, you know, there's lots of alternate timelines in the X-Men books. This was one of the first, if not the first. Uh, so I love the storyline. I tell people a lot of times who want to get into X-Men books, uh, it's a great story to read because it's only two books, right? You don't need to read like 10 different, uh, you know, comic books to get the whole story. It's just two comic books. It's a great, quick read, and I absolutely love it. Now, there's a lot more going on with this comic book. Like I said, there's two different timelines going on and we're introduced to lots of different characters in them. So in the future, yes, alternate versions of characters we already know, but we're also introduced to a woman named Rachel, who we find out later is actually Rachel Summers, the future dystopian daughter of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Well, long story short, that version of Rachel Summers ends up going back in time and she becomes the second Phoenix, who was a, ended up becoming a longtime member of the X-Men and Excalibur, uh, and a pretty cool character in her own right. So this is her first appearance in that alternate future. But we're also introduced to a whole bunch of new members of the Brotherhood of Mutants. So Mystique was not a new character. She had been created by Chris Claremont before this um, in the Ms. Marvel series, but that series ended prematurely. He never actually got to finish his ultimate plans for Mystique. So Chris Claremont brought that character into the X-Men world and uh, she was the leader of the New Brotherhood. And bringing with her was a veteran of comic books, The Blob, who goes back to the earliest days of the X-Men, and uh, several new mutants, who include Destiny, Irene Adler, who, although it was hinted at for a long time to be the partner of Mystique, ends up being confirmed much later in more sensible times, where we could actually talk about it to be Mystique's wife. Um, very cool, clairvoyant, blind mutant, also very recently revealed, spoiler alert, to be Nightcrawler's true mother, Long story, not getting into it. We're also introduced to Avalanche, who I believe is a Greek mutant who has the ability to make seismic waves. And of course, Pyro. Pyro is a mutant that can uh, manipulate fire and control it. Uh, a lot of people know who he is. He was in a lot of the X-Men movies uh, as a student. And I mostly know him because he was the first boss in the X-Men arcade game I used to love as a kid. So lots of first appearances in here and an awesome story, guys. What more could you want? I absolutely love this cover. One of my favorite Marvel covers period, let alone uh, X-Men. It does have uh, a custom label. I don't really, I always say I like these if they match. This one doesn't really match. This is the Jim Lee 90s X-Men, whatever. You see it is an 8.0 off-white to white pages. I already own this book. I have it raw. I don't mind having it slabbed, although this one is a little squeaky and not very tight. Maybe I'll crack it open. It is a higher grade one than the one I already have. I'm happy to pick it up at a great price from my friends. I felt like I talked a lot there and uh, without breathing, but there you go, guys. I love this comic book. Let me know down in the comments if any of you have read Days of Future Past. Oh, and by the way, there was a movie loosely based on this entire story. Uh, so here you have it, guys. Uh, that was a relatively quick uh, comic book roundup video. All sorts of cool stuff I want to show off. Let me know down in the comments, guys. Sound off on which one is your favorite. Uh, and definitely let me know if you were interested in foreign comics at all. I haven't met many people that are, uh, but I think they're pretty cool. Uh, and it was a fun little surprise. That's it, guys. Keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.